Hello, and welcome to the first step in creating your days and your life on your own terms, happy and free. I'm your host, Lauren Foster, happiness coach and founder of Be Happy First. Remember, you can download this playbook and the printable cheat sheet, plus audio versions of both videos so you can listen anytime you like. I'm basically just going to read this book to you with some added insights and tips. Feel free to read along or just relax and listen. Remember this like everything else, is supposed to be fun. How to Have Anything You Want Journaling Playbook My mother told me the story of the magic orchid when I was just a little girl, and I never forgot it. When I decided to use this story in my work, I tried to find the origin of the story, and there was not a single mention. Now, I believe my sweet mama made this up, so I'm attributing the authorship to her, and I think she made it up to try and get me to clean my room. So small things count. One small, beautiful, kind thought has the power to create ripples that change the world in amazing ways. This is what my work is all about, and it's the mission of Be Happy First. The world is full of joy and beautiful things, and our focus on just one of those things empowers us to create more and more joy and beauty in each moment of our day. All teachers and coaches are encouraging you to have the right mindset but few will actually teach you how to have the right mindset. I hope this little journaling book and play shop will be a helpful step for you. I hope that it inspires you to own your habits of thought and action, to choose love and joy and kindness in every moment, to see the magic spread throughout your own life and to the farthest reaches of the world. Commit to doing these journal exercises every day for just 30 days and see how much more joyful and confident and in love with your life you are. Today, you are my magic orchid. The Story of the Magic Orchid by Twyla Foster There was once a woman who lived in a very cluttered and untidy home. She was miserable, and her surroundings were a direct reflection of how she felt on the inside. One day, a man delivered to her door a beautiful plant. It had no card, and the messenger did not say from whence it came. So the woman accepted the gift, perplexed, but feeling already a small spark of pleasure ignite in her heart. The plant was not in any way ordinary. For one thing, it was a breathtakingly beautiful flower, rare and precious as orchids are. And the woman took great pleasure in just looking at it, standing in the doorway of her messy home. After a time, she decided to put the plant down, But when she looked around, there was not a single clean surface that had space for it. So she placed the plant gently on the floor at her feet, and she chose a table in her sitting room and speedily got to work clearing off a space for it. When she had a space cleared, she reverently placed the plant in the clear space and stood back to admire it again. At first, she just basked in the beauty of the plant and marveled at how its warmth seemed to spread out into the room. After a few moments, she noticed the clutter that was still on the rest of the table and thought how much prettier the plant would be when the table was also clear and clean and lovely. So she finished cleaning the table. Then she noticed that the beautiful plant and the clean table were very out of place in the untidy room. So she set about straightening, organizing, dusting, and cleaning the room, and she heard herself start to hum. Startled at how much she was enjoying herself, she kept on until the entire room was bright and sparkling, a worthy setting for the beautiful orchid. By now, she was feeling exhilarated, but a little tired and thirsty, so she decided to take the plant into the kitchen with her to make a snack and a cup of tea. Instantly, she noticed that her kitchen did not match her pretty, clean sitting room, and there was no place to put her plant, so the process repeated itself again. She soon had a sparkling kitchen and was beginning to feel herself full of hope and accomplishment, and her efforts began to spread to her entire house, to her yard, to her body and her person and her life. And before too long, this woman was thinking in a clear way, living in a clear way, thriving in the uncluttered space in her home and in her mind. The magic orchid lived on and was often moved from room to room with the woman as her appreciation for her plant and her life continue to expand and be filled with more and more joy. There are five basic steps to this journaling exercise, and we're going to start with your morning steps, your daily magic steps one through four. 
Choose to start and end every day deliberately and you will soar quickly to greater heights of intentional happiness and success. Use your journal each morning to set your intentions for the day. Make up your mind first thing that you're going to create an extraordinary day full of appreciation and joy for all of your many blessings. You can invest one minute or one hour on this. What's important is to really feel the feelings of appreciation, joy, and optimism. Step one is to choose your magic orchid for the day. So as we talked about in the story, one focal point of beauty can begin to create things that look more like that. So your magic orchid is one beautiful, joyful, amazing thought in your life that you'll use to focus on and attract more and more things like that. It could be the same thing for many days, but we're going to recommend that you choose a different one every day for 30 days. This can be a pet, a person, a memory, a dream for your future, any thought that makes you smile. Just the process of finding a happy thought or sifting through lots of happy thoughts to pick just one is uplifting and shifts your vibration to a much higher frequency. So to tell you a little bit more about this, if you're in a really bad, sad, bad feeling place where things don't seem to be going well, the very act of looking for one thing in the midst of the things that aren't going well is raising your vibration, is teaching your brain to look for things to love. Now, on the opposite end of the spectrum, if you are just already so in love with your life that you can hardly stand yourself, sifting through all of the awesome options that you have to be your magic orchid for the day is further cementing and further teaching your subconscious mind to stay in this high, high vibration. So try to choose a different magic orchid every day for the 30 days of this journey. Step two are affirmations or I am statements for the day. So declare to the universe what you are by writing a series of at least three I am statements. I am healthy. I am fit. I am beautiful. I am rich. I am successful. Anything that it is that you want to experience in your life, declare to the universe that this is what you're going to be. Now, if this feels strange to you at first, just keep doing it. And you will eventually convince yourself in your subconscious that this is the truth and your world will begin to line up to match up with that. So if it feels better, you can say instead, every day I am becoming more and more happy, more and more free, more and more wealthy, successful, fit, healthy. Every day I am a better and better version of myself. This is the part of your day where you are making up your mind who you want to be and living into your day in this way. So step three is our to create list. Now this is where the action comes in. Instead of creating a list of 20 things to do, instead create a list of just three things that are very important for you in the creation of your day. So I am creating a strong and intimate relationship. I am creating a lucrative and impactful business. I'm creating a strong and healthy body and focus on just these three things and ask yourself as you go throughout your day, if the choices that you're making and the way you're choosing to spend your time is in service of the three things that are important to you, then be on the lookout for inspiration and ideas of inspired action that will help you to joyfully create in the way that you want to for your life. And then finally for your morning activities is step four, which is to check in with your vision. Now, creating your vision is a larger subject that we will have a complete workshop in. But in the meantime, your future vision is just how your life will look when everything is working out just exactly the way you want it to be. So you can write about your long-term vision or even a shorter term vision, sometimes six months or three months, or even one month feels better to you. But imagine you're projecting yourself into your future and you've accomplished the things that you want to accomplish and then set out to feel that way for your entire day. Feel as if all of your dreams have already come true. Now, go out and live your day. Have an amazing time. Look for things to appreciate. Look for inspiration. Look for ways that the universe is answering everything that you have asked for. 
and do your very best to feel as good as you can all day and to stay in the highest vibration that you can stay in. Now, if you don't make it until breakfast or you don't even make it to the shower, maintaining your high vibration, that's okay. Don't beat yourself up about that. Just resolve to do the best that you can throughout the rest of your day and start again tomorrow. And then at the end of your day, do your evening journal affirmations. And this is where you give yourself credit for all of the things that you did do in the day instead of, as we usually do, worrying and beating ourselves up for the things that we didn't do. So don't take yourself off to bed thinking about all of the things that are still left on your to-do list. Instead, write down at least three things that you did accomplish. So every evening, make it a point to write at least three things that you succeeded at, accomplished, excelled at during your day. This is a tremendous self-esteem building exercise, and it will probably even improve your sleep. Feel a great appreciation for a day well lived and a delicious anticipation for a brand new day coming tomorrow. Let your subconscious get going on your intentions for tomorrow while you sleep. End your day in this high-flying attitude. Have amazing sleep. Wake up the next day and instantly choose your thoughts. I love my bed. I love anticipating the early morning hours before anyone gets up. I'm looking forward to this day and I can't wait to get started. Start the process all over again and choose your magic orchid. Again, words don't teach. If you've watched this entire video, you're probably thinking, oh, this sounds great and I would love to be able to do this and to be happy and free and choosing how I feel all day. But if you don't actually do these practices, that feeling will fade. In a couple of hours, you'll be back to where you were, feeling discontented with your life, impatient, irritable. Any number of low vibration feelings will take back over, and this isn't where you want to be. So please don't wait. Make your plans right this minute to start this process this very day. Start tonight with step five. You did a lot today. Take credit for your wins instead of thinking of all the things still left on your to-do list. Start right now. I hope you love this. I hope you have experiences that teach you that you really are creating your reality. I hope you really begin to believe that you can be and do and have anything you want and to start living your life that way. Look for us on Be Happy First or and share your experience. I love you and I want you to learn to be happy and free on purpose and share your joy with everyone you meet. I look forward to seeing you at future Be Happy First events. Until then, remember that happiness is a choice and you can always choose to be happy first.